China is the largest and the most dynamic new energy vehicle market in the world. Chinese consumers want a car with better connected and more intelligent features. Elon Musk is widely recognized for bringing battery-powered electric vehicles into the mainstream, and now he is reportedly aiming to do the same with hydrogen-powered vehicles. His approach involves a revolutionary engine that could make these vehicles as affordable as the Tesla Cybertruck, while offering features comparable to hydrogen cars that currently cost nearly twice as much. While Tesla has achieved what was once considered impossible by making EVs mainstream, the United States still does not lead the global automotive industry, something Musk is eager to change. China has dominated automotive innovation for years, producing over 30% of the world's cars since 2009, surpassing the combined output of Japan and Europe. This leadership extends to the electric vehicle sector as well, with China manufacturing 60% of global battery-powered vehicles and 70% of EV batteries. Tesla itself relies on China, with one of its most significant production hubs, Gigafactory 3, based there. To challenge this dominance, Musk began the year by privately presenting a new engine concept to investors at a tech summit. He claimed this technology could revolutionize the automotive sector in ways that even China had not anticipated. While the investors found the pitch intriguing, there was skepticism. The core idea behind the engine was not entirely new. It was based on a technology that had existed for over a century, but had repeatedly failed to gain widespread adoption. The oil crisis of the 1970s had temporarily revived interest in this concept, making it a common topic in engineering education at the time. Anyone pursuing a career in the automobile industry back then was expected to have an informed opinion on the matter. The concept in question was hydrogen-powered engines. These engines generate zero emissions and consume significantly less energy than traditional combustion engines. According to Musk, the fundamental principle remains unchanged. Hydrogen molecules stored in metal hydrides are split into protons and electrons, generating electricity via a specialized catalyst in the fuel cell. Electrons move through a circuit to produce power, while protons pass through a filter, where they combine with oxygen from the air and unused electrons, forming water as a harmless byproduct rather than emitting harmful pollutants. At first glance, this seems like an ideal solution until the costs are considered. Unlike conventional gas stations, hydrogen fueling stations are expensive to build and operate due to the energy-intensive nature of hydrogen storage. The real innovation in Musk's engine lies in its ability to address this issue. The key difference is a newly designed chamber within the engine, dubbed the Hydro Nexus by Musk. This component requires minimal external energy, relying solely on solar power to function. The water produced as a byproduct undergoes electrolysis within this chamber, separating hydrogen from oxygen. The hydrogen is then recirculated back into the fuel cell, while the oxygen is redirected to the intake filter. This closed loop system minimizes the need for refueling, eliminates range anxiety, and reduces additional costs beyond standard maintenance. However, implementing this advanced system increases manufacturing costs by over 30%. Despite this, Musk intends to sell the vehicles at a price point comparable to the Tesla Cybertruck. While he has not disclosed how he plans to make this financially viable, historical examples of past hydrogen engine developments provide some clues. The history of hydrogen-powered engines dates back centuries. In the 17th century, French inventor and military engineer Francois Isaac de Rivaz conceived the idea while working with steam-powered cannons. Noticing the bulkiness and high fuel consumption of steam engines, he proposed using controlled explosions to drive pistons instead. He experimented with hydrogen gas, developing an engine that used stored hydrogen and oxygen from the air to ignite a spark. By 1807, he demonstrated a prototype by installing the engine in a horse-drawn carriage, proving that hydrogen could serve as a viable fuel source for transportation. Despite its potential, hydrogen fuel technology saw little investment for over a century. It was not until the 1972 oil crisis, when the Organization of Arab Petroleum Exporting Countries restricted oil exports due to geopolitical tensions, that interest in alternative fuels resurfaced. The crisis led to skyrocketing fuel prices and long lines at gas stations, prompting governments worldwide to explore alternative energy sources. During this period, scientific research into hydrogen fuel intensified. A group of students at Brigham Young University in Utah developed the Super Beetle, a hydrogen-powered vehicle. 
Shortly after, engineer Roger Billings successfully converted a Cadillac Seville to run on hydrogen. These projects demonstrated that hydrogen fuel was a viable alternative, but when oil prices stabilized, interest quickly waned. With fossil fuels remaining affordable and widely available, there was little incentive to invest in hydrogen infrastructure. Decades later, in 1990, a landmark report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC, reignited the discussion on alternative energy. The study confirmed that global temperatures were rising due to excessive carbon dioxide emissions, largely driven by the widespread use of fossil fuels. Climate scientist Charles Keeling provided further evidence by measuring annual CO2 levels, which showed a continuous upward trend. In response to these alarming findings, world leaders convened at the Earth Summit in Brazil to establish policies aimed at reducing environmental harm. These discussions led to regulations that pushed major automakers toward alternative energy solutions, setting the stage for renewed interest in hydrogen technology. With Musk's latest pitch, hydrogen engines may finally have a chance to succeed. If he can overcome the historical obstacles that have hindered hydrogen-powered vehicles, cost, infrastructure, and efficiency, this technology could disrupt the automotive industry on an unprecedented scale. California's zero-emission vehicle, ZEV, mandate caused frustration among many car manufacturers. This law required automakers to produce a specific number of zero-emission vehicles within a few years to continue selling in the state. This was just one of several regulations leading companies like Toyota, Honda, and General Motors to heavily invest in hydrogen technology. What made it even more frustrating for manufacturers was that the government could have provided funding to support this transition 20 years ago, but instead, private companies bore the financial burden. In 1993, just three years after the ZEV mandate, General Motors introduced its first hydrogen fuel cell prototype, the Hydrin 1. Toyota unveiled their fuel cell hybrid vehicle in 1996, and Honda presented the FCX in 1999. However, these vehicles remained as concept models and did not reach the mass market. General Motors also revealed the High Wire, another concept car, but it too was never produced. Over time, various manufacturers introduced limited edition hydrogen-powered vehicles. Some ran on internal combustion engines that produced vapor as a byproduct, while others used fuel cells to produce liquid water. Though these models gained popularity and sold out quickly, None were produced in large quantities due to a lack of infrastructure and safety concerns. A notable example is the 2003 Mazda RX-8 Hydrogen RE, a sports car that could run on both gasoline and hydrogen. It was discontinued after just three years. Similarly, the BMW Hydrogen 7, a luxury sedan released in 2007, only lasted two years and featured a modified V12 engine that could run on either gasoline or hydrogen. In 2013, Hyundai introduced the Tucson with a hydrogen fuel cell, but it was only available in limited markets in small quantities. Producing hydrogen-powered vehicles in large quantities was expensive, largely due to the need for liquid hydrogen to be stored at extremely low temperatures. The landscape changed in 2014 when Toyota introduced the Mirai, the world's first dedicated mass-produced fuel cell vehicle. Initially launched in Japan, the Mirai sold out in California within months, and soon after, it was available in the UK, Germany, and Denmark. Priced at about $70,000, it was relatively affordable, though it was still over $20,000 more expensive than Tesla's Model 3. By the end of 2019, Toyota had sold over 10,000 units, and the numbers continued to rise. However, it was revealed that Toyota was losing approximately $100,000 on each Mirai they sold. As of January, Toyota had sold over 20,000 units, but had lost more than $2 billion since the Mirai's launch. Despite these losses, Toyota continued to produce the vehicle, possibly with support from government subsidies aimed at fighting climate change and making the cars more affordable. This situation has garnered attention from Elon Musk, who reportedly plans to introduce a hydrogen-powered vehicle similar to the Mirai's engine but without selling it at a loss. According to reports, Musk's plan involves using Tesla's existing gigafactories to produce hydrogen at a significantly lower cost. Tesla's factories, already equipped with renewable energy sources like solar and wind, could produce hydrogen using advanced electrolyzers, cutting production costs. To further reduce costs, 
Musk is said to be exploring partnerships with companies that have already invested in electrolyzers, such as Aramco, for the first few years of production. After that, Tesla would likely take over the hydrogen production process. Musk's approach involves combining hydrogen fuel cells with small battery packs that store energy from braking and heat. This hybrid system would not only address the issue of slow power delivery common in hydrogen engines, but also complement existing Tesla models. Musk is also exploring the use of metal hydrides, such as magnesium hydride, as a safer and cheaper alternative to the cryogenic storage systems used by Toyota and Hyundai. Metal hydrides naturally absorb hydrogen gas when under low pressure and release it when pressure is reduced. This method is safer than storing hydrogen in large tanks at extremely low temperatures and requires less space. To keep production costs low, Musk plans to use aerospace-grade materials from SpaceX to build the hydrogen storage containers, as these are cheaper to produce. The final hurdle for Musk will be manufacturing. Creating several units of hydrogen engines will require new assembly lines designed specifically for hydrogen vehicles, as adapting Tesla's existing battery-powered architecture to accommodate hydrogen fuel cells will be a complex task. Significant modifications would need to be made to existing models if they were to incorporate hydrogen cells. Many may be surprised to learn that even Teslas contain oil. It's used in the way the oil mixes with coolant, even though you don't need to perform oil changes. Adapting current vehicles to work with hydrogen cells will require new technologies, such as robotics, artificial intelligence, and modular construction techniques to streamline production and make it more cost-effective. If all goes according to plan, it's expected that the prototype of this new engine will be ready by late 2026, although recent acquisitions by Elon Musk hint that it might be revealed sooner. Tesla's expansion into hydrogen-powered vehicles is not limited to cars. The company is eyeing various sectors such as freight, maritime, and aviation. This would allow Tesla to dominate industries like trains, ships, airplanes, and power generators by the next decade, potentially eliminating competition before it even emerges. To further reduce costs, Elon Musk has proposed an innovative plan involving a paid subscription for hydrogen refueling. This would offer an affordable way for users to fuel their cars while maximizing profits for Tesla. Through a digital renewable energy currency, users could easily purchase fuel and long-term subscribers would receive additional benefits like bonus refuel sessions. This subscription could help offset the vehicle's initial cost and make hydrogen cars more accessible. Moreover, with strong governmental support for hydrogen cell technology in places like Europe and Japan, Tesla's hydrogen-powered cars might even become cheaper than the Cybertruck in the months following their release. With a lower starting price and an affordable refueling plan, Musk aims to bring hydrogen cars to the mainstream, much like how electric vehicles gained traction over the years. However, several challenges remain. Hydrogen production is still inefficient with current technology, making large-scale production for thousands of cars impractical. Even with renewable energy sources, the process is far from cost-effective. Tesla's partnerships with companies experienced in creating electrolyzers will help to cut costs initially, but building the entire hydrogen production system from scratch could be difficult and costly. Additionally, while metal hydrides offer a more affordable alternative to traditional hydrogen storage tanks, they still present significant challenges. Storage systems for hydrogen fuel need to be built from premium materials like platinum, making the engine more expensive and harder to produce. Integrating hydrogen refueling into Tesla's existing supercharger stations is another hurdle. These stations were designed for electric vehicles, so retrofitting them to accommodate hydrogen fuel will require significant investment and construction of specialized equipment. This will not only increase manufacturing costs, but also require retraining Tesla's staff to handle the new complexities of assembling fuel cell systems. Another issue Tesla will face is overcoming the public's skepticism about hydrogen technology. While hydrogen-powered vehicles have long been praised by environmental advocates, they have also been criticized for being less practical than battery electric vehicles. Convincing consumers to switch from electric to hydrogen-powered cars will be a monumental task, especially when electric vehicles are already becoming more affordable and reliable. Hydrogen cars will need to compete against established players like Toyota and Hyundai, who have years of experience in hydrogen technology. Tesla, 
Though a major player in the electric vehicle market, will need to play catch up for several years before making a name for itself in the hydrogen market. Finally, the demand for hydrogen cars remains uncertain. While there is a market for heavy duty vehicles like trucks that can travel long distances, the average consumer might find hydrogen powered cars less practical due to the infrastructure challenges and higher costs. Many consumers are already familiar with battery electric vehicles, which have overcome issues like range anxiety. Introducing a less convenient option may not appeal to the average person, particularly those with limited budgets. Despite these obstacles, Elon Musk remains confident that Tesla can deliver a hydrogen-powered engine. Whether this vision becomes a reality remains to be seen, and much will depend on the company's ability to overcome the numerous challenges in the hydrogen fuel sector. Until then, all we can do is wait for the official announcement. Do you think Tesla will succeed in bringing hydrogen-powered cars to market? Or is this just another ambitious idea that will not come to fruition? Let us know your thoughts in the comments.